and welcome. I'm your host Aditi Singh and you're watching My India. India is a global leader in the financial technology sector, experiencing rapid growth due to increased digital adoption and financial inclusion. The market is set to expand significantly, supported by substantial investments and government initiatives. Our report explores India's digital revolution in finance and the use of AI to address emerging challenges in the sector. The fintech sector in India has experienced significant growth emerging as a global leader in digital financial services. Initiatives like Digital India and financial inclusion schemes, coupled with advancements in AI, blockchain, and big data, have driven this expansion. The United Payments Interface UPI, and digital wallets have further boosted consumer adoption. A key success in financial inclusion is the Pradhan Mantri Jandan Yojana, launched in 2014. It allows individuals to open basic savings accounts with no minimum balance, offering benefits such as interest on deposits, accident insurance, and overdraft facilities. With over 530 million beneficiaries and deposits surpassing 28 billion, more than 65% of accounts are in rural and semi-urban areas. The program has also facilitated direct benefit transfers totaling around 47 billion. Arch. 530 million यानी 53 करोड़ से अधिक लोगों के पास जनधन बैंक खाते हो गए हैं यानी 10 साल में हमने एक प्रकार से पूरी यूरोपियन यूनियन के बराबर आबादी को बैंकिंग सिस्टम से जोड़ा है साथियों जनधन आधार मोबाइल की ट्रिनिति ने एक और ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन को गति दी है कभी लोग कहते थे कि कैश इज किंग आज दुनिया का करीब करीब आधा रियल टाइम डिजिटल ट्रांजैक्शन भारत में होता है India's financial technology sector was prominently featured at the 5th Global Fintech Fest in Mumbai, where both domestic and international companies showcased their advancements. With over 10,000 fintech companies, India now boasts the third largest fintech ecosystem globally, growing at a 14% compound annual growth rate. The industry has attracted over 31 billion in investments over the past decade, with startups experiencing a growth of over 500%. The digital revolution that is required, uh, that is a necessity to, uh, for this country, is what I witness when I see all this multitude of people solving a bunch of problems ranging from something as simple as payments to analytics to lending to multiple different solutions. So, and they are approaching it in very many different technologies. So, it's not as if India is lagging behind in terms of adopting Web3. I see a lot of initiatives that is happening in terms of Web3 technology as well. I've seen blockchain being attempted. I'm seeing a lot of solutions that are being built for every aspect of the financial value chain. And that to me is extremely heartening. The world is here and um, we, we just are here to, to look for what, what we can learn. Um, what are the reasons for the Indian success in fintech? Is there anything we can uh, copy, we can um, do in the same way? Or is there any potential to, to bring companies together from Europe and India to further develop technologies of the future, next steps? Many artificial intelligence companies are entering the fintech sector to revolutionize financial services by enhancing customer experiences and operational efficiency. AI technologies enable real-time fraud detection, personalized financial advice, and automated customer support via chatbots. 
As the sector grows, AI is crucial for driving innovation, reducing costs, and offering tailored financial solutions, solidifying India's position as a leader in the global fintech landscape. Once primarily known for its rich culture and strong connection with nature, Jharkhand in eastern India is now gaining recognition for its prowess in sports, particularly in archery, a tradition deeply rooted in the state's heritage. The tribal youth of Jharkhand are increasingly pursuing archery as a viable career option, resonating with their age-old tradition of the sport. We bring you this special report. Meet Reena, a 20-year-old girl from a tribal community in Jharkhand who is highly enthusiastic about archery. Hailing from the small village of Rupru in the Ranchi district, Reena has won multiple awards in archery at various state and national level competitions. Her aspiration to compete in the Olympics drives her daily efforts to balance both her studies and her passion for archery. In doing so, she is becoming an inspiration and a source of pride for her family and friends. In my center, there was nothing in the center. My head was taken from the side of my head. They were all learning from me. First, my coach सिल्ली से आना जाना करते थे और हमें सिखाते थे कि थोड़ा धीरे धीरे करते यहाँ खुद रहने लगे खुद खाना पीना करके खुद हमें सिखाते थे और हमें बहुत ही सपोर्ट करते थे हमें जो भी कमी रहता था सब पूरा करते थे उसके बाद हमारा परफॉर्मेंस अच्छा दिखने लगा सरकार फिर यहाँ पे डेबोडिंग खोल दिए फिर वहाँ जिम आया फिर हम जिम करने लगे हैं कि स्कूल का सपोर्ट बहुत रहता है सर और कोच का भी सपोर्ट बहुत रहता है घर का भी सपोर्ट रहता है हाँ अभी तक मेरा तेईस नेशनल मेडल है और मेरा सपना है कि आगे और जितना भी गेम आएगा सब में मैं अच्छा करूँ वो झारखंड के लिए मेडल दी From the World Cup and Asian Games to World Championship, archers from Jharkhand have achieved over 20 international medals since 2010 and have consistently been at the top of the winners list. Citing the growing potential in the region, the government has established several boarding centers across the state to support and train budding archers. Archery in Jharkhand is more than a sport. It's a tradition passed down through generations, with children often introduced to the bow and arrow at a young age. Originally used for hunting and protection, this historical connection gives young archers a natural affinity for the sport. Jharkhand has produced many talented archers, including Deepika Kumari, a tribal girl who competed in the Paris Olympics in 2024. Her 17-year journey has inspired many tribal youths to pursue archery. Deepika is the first Indian archer to achieve world number one in women's individual recurve first in 2012 and again in 2021. When I first played, there was no platform for the competition. Now what happened? The government has removed the Khelo India. And all juniors, sub-juniors, this is all the competition. Our equipment has a cost of 4.5 lakhs. So what happens to the kids after Khelo India? After coming, the kids don't have to think about how to explain their money or take it. The government supports them. You will be able to perform well, you will be able to support your monthly, you will be able to give you some money so that you can spend your equipment and spend your kit and perform well. As tribal youth gain recognition in the field, corporations have also been attracted to invest in the development of sports in the region. Through archery, these youths are not only gaining recognition globally, but also breaking societal stereotypes and barriers in sports. मैं इस एकेडमी में दो साल से लगातार प्रशिक्षण ले रहा हूँ। इसने हमारे कोचेस लोग हम लोग को एक मतलब अच्छा लेवल में जाने के लिए ट्रेनिंग दे रहे हैं। मैं बोकारो एक साल है, वहाँ सेन द्वारा संचालित की मतलब डेवोडिंग का 
समर कैंप लगाया जाता है उसमें सभी खेल होता है जिसमें तीरंदाजी में मैं मुझे देख के तीरंदाजी अच्छा लगा तो मैंने उस पर गया फिर वहाँ से मैं सेन से प्रैक्टिस किया फिर वहाँ से अच्छा करने के बाद यहाँ आया यहाँ पे राष्ट्रीय लेवल का प्रतियोगिता खेला फिर उस तरह फिर मेरा ओलंपिक में मेडल लाने का जज्बा आ गया और उसी पर मैं काम कर रहा The government is supporting youth with scholarships and nutritional aid to remove financial barriers to training. Mohan Kumar, an archery coach from the state sponsored Eklavia Tirandazi Kendra, notes that the academy trains athletes for Olympic level competition and has produced numerous champions. Coaching career mein main lagbhag 6 saal Dumka mein raha hu aur Dumka ek santhal adivasi bahul kshetra hai. उस क्षेत्र में मैं कई ऐसे तिरंदाजों को राष्ट्रीय स्तर की प्रतियोगिताओं में पदक जिताया है और आदिवासी बच्चे खास करके घरों से शारीरिक रूप से काफ़ी मजबूत होते हैं तो उनमें से दुमका जैसे क्षेत्र एक बहुल आदिवासी क्षेत्र है उस क्षेत्र से भी कई इंटरनेशनल प्लेयर निकले हैं खास करके चैवासा से भी कई निकले हैं सरायकला से भी निकले हैं तो जैसे मंगल हो है मंगल सिंह चैम्पिया है ओलम्पियन भी है साथ ही साथ वर्ल्ड पुलिस गेम्स में बुलबुल मरानी ने मेडल दिया है जो दुमका का है मनोज मुर्मू है जिन्होंने भी इंटरनेशनल में अच्छा परफॉर्म किया है तो ऐसे हमारे राज्य में ज़्यादातर आदिवासी बच्चे ही हैं और वो बच्चे खेल में बहुत अच्छा कर रहे हैं खास करके तिरंदाजी जैसे खेल में देखें तो अगर रेशियो निकाल करके देखें तो फिफ्टी बच्चे आदिवासी हैं बालक बालिका है जो लोग बहुत अच्छे कर रहे हैं Jharkhand's deep-rooted archery tradition, supported by government initiatives and local talent, continues to flourish. With well-established stars like Deepika Kumari and a strong pipeline of young archers, the state is establishing itself as a powerhouse in the sport. People in India from diverse faiths have lived in harmony for centuries. In southern Karnataka's Kalaburugi district, The Dargah of Hazrat Siddi Basha unites individuals from different religions. Situated in a tranquil area away from bustling town, the Dargah creates a calming atmosphere. Respected by all, Hazrat Siddi Basha dedicated his life to helping others and promoting goodwill. Take a look. For centuries, people of diverse faiths in India have lived in harmonious coexistence. This long-standing tradition of mutual respect and shared values underscores the nation's commitment to unity and peace. Nestled in the serene Kalaburagi district of Karnataka, the Darga of Hazrat Siddi Basha stands as a testament to the enduring spirit of communal harmony in India. In a nation celebrated for its rich tapestry of cultures and religions, the Darga serves as a beacon of peace, uniting people from diverse backgrounds under the ages of spiritual devotion and mutual respect. यहाँ सभी प्रकार के धर्म के और community के लोग आके सिद्धि बाशा Darga को मन्नत मांगते हो और मन्नत पूरा होने के बाद देर विश्व पूरा होने के बाद वो या आ यहाँ आके चादर चढ़ाते और फूल चढ़ाते और अन्न संतर्पण वगैरह करते ये दर सिद्धि बादशाह दरगाह एक कम्युनल हारमोनी और सेकुलरिज्म के लिए काम करे सो दरगाह है The Dargah of Hazrat Siddi Basha is set in a tranquil environment that fosters a sense of calm and positivity. Visitors from across the country, regardless of their religious affiliation, comes to seek solace and blessings from the revered Sufi saint. This holy site is not merely a place of worship but a symbol of unity where the teachings of Hazrat Siddi Basha transcend religious boundaries, advocating for the universal values of compassion, service and spiritual enlightenment. I visit this uh, shrine since my childhood, and what I have seen is this is a place where every religion comes, irrespective of their anything. They come with the belief that he does listen to us, he will pray for us. Let it be Hindu, Muslim, or Christian, anything. They come, they ask for their problems, they request saint, they ask please pray from 
our side so that uh, our wishes get uh, fulfilled the saint's legacy is deeply intertwined with the ethos of communal harmony throughout his life hazrat siddi basha dedicated himself to the welfare of humanity promoting the message of love and inclusivity His teachings have resonated with people of all faiths, reinforcing the idea that spiritual and moral values can bridge divides and foster a sense of shared purpose among individuals from different backgrounds. Now let's delve into World in Focus, featuring the latest global developments and events shaping our world. The historic lake village of Ganvi in Benin hosted its annual festival of nautical sports, cultures and arts. From August 24 to 31, the festival drew hundreds of canoes and barges to celebrate the village's vibrant traditions with music, dance, boat races, traditional foods and spiritual ceremonies. Ganviyed, often called the Venice of Africa, is a stilt village on Lake Noko, built by the Tofino people in the 18th century to escape slavery. The festival showcased the community's rich heritage and nautical sports, attracting participants and spectators from the region. Traditional dances on canoes celebrated the deep connection between the Ganvi people and their lake. Evestine Dusso head of Ganvie expressed immense satisfaction with the festival noting its significance and the joy it brought to the community Pickles or achar are a vital part of Indian cuisine adding flavor and spice to meals they vary regionally using ingredients like mangoes lemons chilies garlic and vegetables Now this tradition not only enriches meals but also fuels the growing pickle making industry in India. Take a look. An Indian meal without a pickle is nearly unthinkable. From the tangy pickles of northern India to the sweet spicy varieties of the south, pickles reflect India's rich culinary diversity. In New Delhi, Kiran Mishra, the family matriarch, cherishes memories of making pickles with her mother, an experience that holds deep emotional significance. The aroma of pickles often evoke childhood nostalgia, as Kiran's older sister Seema Pandey recalls her school days when achar and paratha were her favorite breakfast. अपनों की याद आती है पुराने टाइम की याद आती है जब हम अपनी मम्मी के साथ बैठ के उसको डाला करते थे मम्मी आम का चार पता है उसको करती थी तेल में डुबो के उसको नमक मिला के दो दिन धूप में रखती थी उसमें हम लोग कितना तो अचार फाके आम की ऐसी खा जाते थे ये समझ लो चार पे भी बिछाए उसको हमने मतलब इतना टेस्टी लगता था तो मुझे पुरानी यादें आ गई जब हम छोटे थे छोटे छोटे थे स्कूल जाते थे मम्मी अचार डालती थी तो हम लोग का तो नाश्ता ही था वो अचार पराठा खाना बहुत टेस्ट आता था उसमें बाकी सब्जियां वगैरह सब हमारे लिए फेल थे इन द पास्ट पिकल्स इन इंडिया वर टिपिकली मेड एट होम हाउएवर विद मॉडर्न लाइफ्स टाइम कंस्ट्रेंट्स द राइज ऑफ पिकल मेकिंग फैक्ट्रीज हैज ओपन न्यू अपॉर्चुनिटीज In Bihar's Darbhanga, Kalpana and Uma Jha began their pickle business to share the authentic flavors of the Mithila region with people who have moved away for work or education. Since starting a few years ago, their business has skyrocketed and their brand has become one of the most popular pickle names around. ये भारत में तरह तरह के स्वाद हैं अचार बनाने की वो तरह तरह की विधियाँ हैं हर स्टेट का अपना एक स्वाद है जैसे हमारे मिथिला का एक अपना स्वाद है तो इस तरह से अल, अल, स्वाद में वेरिएशन है और हमारे मिथिलांचल का जो अचार है या कह लीजिए उत्तर भारत का जितने भी तरह स्टेट हैं उनका जो अचार है वो काफ़ी चटपटा स्पाइसी होता है तो गुजरात का जैसे थोड़ा मीठे के साइड होता है और साउथ में थोड़ा ज़्यादा स्पाइसी होता है 
तो इस तरह से ये अचार हर स्टेट का अपना अलग अलग है Pickles in India are not only culturally significant but also valued for their health benefits. The spices used, like cumin, fenugreek, black pepper, and asafoetida, offer medicinal properties and are often roasted to further enhance their flavors. India's diverse agricultural heritage contributes to unique pickle flavors with regional variations. Gujarat's pickles are sweeter, northern pickles are tangy and spicy, and southern pickles are fiery. This regional diversity highlights India's rich culinary landscape with each state and household adding its own twist to this cherished condiment. This is lemon ka char hota hai. Wo swasth ke liye kafi acha hota hai kyunki wo to vitamin C prachur matra mein hote hain. Amla ka char hua, hari mirch ka char hua, usme bhi vitamin C prachur matra mein hote hain. Jab jab main choti thi to main dekhti thi hum log ko jo fever hota tha to aruchi ho jata tha. खाने में स्वाद नहीं लगता था तो मम्मी क्या करती थी लेमन का चार दे देती थी उसमें चूंकि आजवाइन रहता है तो हमारे इसलिए जो स्पाइसीज भी होते हैं वे भी काफी स्वास्थ्यवर्धक होते हैं आप सौंप ले लीजिए अजवाइन ले लीजिए या काला नमक भी पचाता है नीम ले लीजिए हमारे अचार में जो है शुद्ध सरसों का तेल पड़ता है तो इस तरह से हम लोग स्वास्थ्य को हेल्थ को देखते हुए भी अचार को बनाते हैं As globalization grows, preserving traditional food practices becomes challenging. Yet, the enduring popularity of Indian pickles offers hope. They symbolize unity and diversity and remind us that simple things like a spoonful of achar can carry deep stories and connections to our roots. India's tribal communities make up about 8.5% of the population and are known for their rich culture and heritage. They live in different areas like forests, hills and remote places and have their unique languages, traditions and ways of life. The government is focusing on improving their lives through education. In Gujarat, both the government and NGOs are working to address educational gaps and promote inclusivity. aiming to empower the future of these communities In Gujarat the Bil Seva Mandal an NGO founded by Takar Baba is supporting tribal communities through its network of residential schools Supported by government scholarships and grants covering tuition books and uniforms these schools have greatly increased enrollment and instilled optimism in the communities Blending traditional wisdom with modern education, they focus on preserving cultural heritage, teaching vocational skills, and integrating digital literacy. With a 100% success rate in matriculation exams, these schools exemplify a commitment to academic excellence. Bilsa Mandal is a very small organization that is running. यहाँ जो बैठे हैं ऐसी बीस आश्रमशाला हम चलाते हैं और करीब पंद्रह हज़ार से ज़्यादा बच्चे हमारे स्कूलों में रहते हैं और पढ़ते हैं बिलसा मंडल की ये संस्थाओं की वजह से राजस्थान एमपी और ये बॉर्डर के एरिया में जो शिक्षा का दर है वो शिक्षा का दर इसलिए बड़ा है कि ये संस्था का यार रहने का और खाने पीने का और पढ़ने का दोनों की सुविधा मिलती है जो गरीब माँ बाप के बच्चे हैं जो खेत मजदूरी करते हैं जिनका कोई यहाँ मिलता नहीं है और बाहर मजदूरी जाते हैं उनके बच्चे यहाँ रहते हैं पढ़ते हैं यहाँ हमारा गामना छोकरा वो बढ़ने गया थे आने बढ़ने गया थे आने शिक्षक डॉक्टर वगैरह बनिया थे इतने मने हमारा पापा मम्मी पापा ये मने यहाँ बनवा मुकी थे अने मने यहाँ रेवानी रेवानी आने सुवानी बद्दी सुविधा मरे चेतले मने यह सारू लगे चे मने शिक्षा को पन सारू बनावे चे आने स्मार्ट बोर्ड में भी बनावे चे मने सारू लगे चे Free 
Re-education and hostile facilities motivated Jagabai Dumor, a small-scale tribal farmer, to enroll his grandson, Vikram, at the Varuna Residential School in Suksar village. He is hopeful that education will bring positive changes to their family, and he knows that the initiative has already transformed many lives in the region. Varun Ashram mau bano su saru suvida baddi mafat mala chhe. Itle moto thay na hoon, thay moto adhikar bano maangu chhu. Maro chukro bano Ashram mau bane chhe. Ema thi ho khawa piwa nu baddu bhi mali re chhe. Bano Ashram mau ibi sukhanta mali re chhe. Sarkar taraf thi kubi gamati pun mafat bhi mali re chhe. Khawa piwa ni chagur bhi bhi thi ya mali re chhe. हुआ नो पशे को भी गमती आइटम में पुरते यहाँ पर मिली रहे थे। By providing quality education while preserving the cultural heritage of the communities, the Bill Seva Mandal, with government support, is not only shaping the future of these students, but is also contributing to the overall development of tribal communities. By blending heritage conservation with educational reforms, Gujarat is empowering its tribal communities towards a prosperous future. And with that, we wrap up today's episode of My India. We will see you next week at the same time. Till then, goodbye and take care.